I love this comment. It says, if you think for one second that they are going to let Trump walk into the White House in less than a month, you're dreaming. Now, what the guy was saying was, right now, Trump is winning. I mean, he's winning. Swing states, insiders, all the ones that are not tied to legacy media, the people that are on the ground are, are realizing he is dominating to a point where Kamala is doing more interviews and actually it's almost like doom loop that she's, she's doing more interviews and actually losing more support because her interviews are so horrible. But to think within 30 days they're going to elect Trump or allow him to get it with just a simple win and then just go down with the L, you're badly mistaken and sadly mistaken. I believe we're going to see a crazy rest of the weeks and it starts with some of these stories today. We're going to dive into a Virginia story that will blow your mind that the DOJ and the government is stepping in to try to sue the state for reasons that will blow your mind. Also NATO, they're readying troops. Now remember, Zelensky after meeting with Trump coincidentally decided to say he's looking for a chance for truth, for peace. Well, if he wants peace, he tried last time and Great Britain and U.S. stopped it a few years back. Now he's wanting it again. However, NATO is readying troops. Why is that? Is that something we should be paying attention to? Again, a war would cause a major situation, a hiccup when it comes to elections. What about a new Trump request to, uh, for safety, actually, to blow your mind? Is he worried about you know, people wanting to harm him? He should be. I'm telling you, we are getting into the end game. And the question is, are we ready? Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Give us a thumbs up. It does mean the world to us and it sure helps us spread our message across this platform. Uh, by you commenting, it helps share to other people. Uh, gives ideas, community, and helps us understand maybe a better approach if I'm saying something wrong or you think there's a different way. There's nothing wrong with uh, making comments because it helps us grow as a community to be more wiser and to have a common sense approach to the crazy world that we live in. Now let's talk through today. I believe that uh, these next few weeks will be very, very tough. I believe there'll be a lot go on because I believe that the Democrats are not just going to lie and say, okay, we're going to allow Trump to win. You already saw the superstar Obama come out trying to do all he can to, to salvage and save Kamala. You've already seen that they're trying to skew more messages. I mean, you see, actually, they're going to Colorado. They're going to New York. They're going to Minnesota to speak again. These are leftist strongholds. At the same time, Trump's going those too. So are they worried that they could win? Are they worried that they could lose some of these, these left blue states? I think they are. Because have you seen how bad and cringy Kamala has been? Again, I say this every day, but truthfully, go back and watch some of the highlights and interviews that she's done. It will blow your mind. Yesterday, she spoke without a teleprompter at another event, and she basically just cackled and stated um, that she wants change, and that when if, if you elect her, she'll change. She never said what that change was, never talked about agenda, just said she's from the middle class and she is going to change. Do we really want to elect someone who doesn't even have a plan? When Trump came out with tax deductible plans yesterday and no estate tax and uh, all these things that could benefit us as Americans. This is from CNN Politics. It says, Trump campaign asked for military aircraft with anti-missile capabilities and other security measures in lead up to election. I mean, he knows the threat on his life. You know he does, especially after there's been attempts already, two, maybe even three, but not only that, he knows that there could be major repercussions because of what he's willing to do to push against the establishment once again. So Trump comes out and says, I need more protection. And the sad thing is, I don't know if they're going to grant it, but if I was Trump, I would make sure I had private contractors beside me at all times. There's no, rate, there's no way that I would just trust you know, the situations that's been going on. And so he believes that this is also going to be tough. So I thought that was huge that he even said, look, we need to pay attention to this. Now, here's, let's go on the other side. We have more more celebrities coming out and endorsing Kamala. I mean, Bon Jovi and, and um, Jessica Alba and, and all these big stars. 
do we really want people who live fake lives on television and seeing on the road away from their families to give us advice on who we vote for? I love when actors say they're going to support a politician. I'm like, what? How do you influence me? You live a life of faking who you are each and every day to then represent that you make the best choice. Taylor Swift sings songs about how bad she makes choices with men and then we allow her to choose our president? I mean, come on. Not only are movie stars and entertainers coming alongside Kamala, because again, most of them are tied to the system. You had Mark Milley come out and he's like, hey, we're gonna, I mean, if Trump wins, I mean, he may court-martial me. I mean, he, he may be a fascist. He will be the worst thing ever. The same thing with all this military brass. They've worked so hard on the establishment and get so high till they don't want to give it up. One thing I think Trump represents is a difference. And I think that that's what all these people are scared of, a difference. They're scared of a difference. And when you make a difference and you change the status quo, I think it scares these people to death. Now, Obama's been coming out more and more. Have you seen, Obama looks bad, man. He's like lost weight and looks really sick. I, I hope he's okay. But what I'm saying is he's coming out and he, he's profiling people to vote and actually it, it dumbs down the democratic class i mean don't let him dumb down the democratic class it's mind-blowing but trump sees it so trump all of a sudden says hey we need to make sure that we have protection and i would like to have military aircrafts with anti-missiles uh, systems on there that's a big deal and that moves right into the next story with nato this is new marching orders has been issued for nato you know we talked last week about france readying troops well that's exactly what nato is wanting France has embarked on a quiet force to build up an expansion on the troops right next to Romania. Again, this is after Zelensky is saying he wants a truce, he wants a peace. He said that even though he's still trying to get money, he went to the Vatican last week, he literally came out and stated that he'd be willing to sit down and negotiate. Well, remember, if he would have done it two years ago, he'd had more land. But he let the UK and US talk him into keeping on in this war. Now he has less troops, less men in his country, and less borders. So the best thing for him to do is sit down because I believe if he does not sit down and for peace, I believe Russia will kill him uh, or somebody will take him out. So he comes out and states that he wants peace. Well, NATO is, is pushing against that. So do we actually believe that NATO is trying to keep peace or are they trying to cause war? He says, we used to play war. French Bertrand Tuyo once quoted, now there's a designated enemy and we train our people to whom we'd actually go to war with. Does that sound like rhetoric or does that sound like true, um, really, talking points of how they're going to go to war? I mean, it blows my mind that you have the two leaders who are saying they want peace, but we're the ones throwing matches on a diesel engulfed um, pile and we wanted to light it back up. It just blows my mind. So NATO is saying we're going to ready more troops and with 30 days we're going to be ready for battle is what this eastern flank is saying. 30 days, isn't it weird how this could happen previous? That they're building up troops and they say within 30 days it will be ready? Isn't that a little strange to you? With election being this close? What about November 1st, California's bringing back mask mandates and, and, and rules and regulations to your travel? You don't believe all this is coincidental? That's all happening before November 5th? Within 30 days? Is that not crazy to you? What about Virginia? It says Kamala's DOJ is suing the state of Virginia because they removed nine citizens from the voter rolls. Kamala's DOJ is suing Virginia because Glenn Youngkin removed people from the rolls that had legally been barred from voting in American elections. So, so the, the G, DOJ and the government is suing a state that has the rights to say what they want to say and do what they want to do. But they're suing a state because they want non-citizens to vote in an election. Do we not think that that is dishonest? And do we not think that that has, um, you know, uh, probably nefarious reasons of why they want non-citizens voting? I mean, how is this possible? How are we in this time to where this is even a, 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 a story that they even have a leg to stand on? This is America. Why are we allowing people to have a chance to vote? And our DOJ is standing with it. You know why? Because they want to skew the vote. If they can get millions of people who were illegal to vote, then that allows Kamala to have a chance. Because I think without it, Kamala has no chance. She is 
I mean, she is in a complete meltdown. Her campaign is faltering completely. So should, I ho this is what I hope. I hope Virginia stands up. I'm not the biggest Yunkin supporter. I think he's a lot more moderate. But I do think there's qualities of him that says, you know what, we, we can't allow these people to walk over. So I hope that Virginia will stand strong. I hope that Yunkin will stand strong because this is not a right-wing stronghold. You know, Virginia is not a stronghold for, for, for Republicans. So if we stand a good chance of winning, it's going to take Yunkin standing up to the DOJ. That's a big thing when a, when a state stands up to its government. It's a big deal. So we need to pay attention to this story. Uh, this happened just last week, I think, in Alabama. So it's going to keep on happening, and it's going to happen in Texas and California and all these states because the DOJ is wanting these illegals to vote and people who are not supposed to be on the voting rolls to be on the voting rolls. Why don't you listen to what MSNBC says? It says, electing Trump is like electing Elon. Trump and Elon are like dangerous, and they're like toxic in their masculinity. Well, first and foremost, please don't take this the wrong way. Being masculine is not toxic. Being a man is what we need. We need leaders. And we've got softies and we've got weak men trying to lead us. The people in the military that have cowtailed to everything, like Mark Milley, who he was kind of selling out of his country to talk to China. How you had other ones that were going behind Trump's back and going behind all the administration's back doing their thing. That's weak men. We need toxic masculinity. We need toxic masculinity back to where men will be men again. I think that's what makes Elon and Trump and Vivek so likable to me and so electable because people see, yeah, you know what? Sometimes they can be bombastic. Sometimes they can say crazy things and put their foot in their mouth. But at least one thing, Trump didn't start any new wars. He had no one dying under his watch. He kept people at bay. Enemies were scared to death of him because he ran his mouth and it scared North Korea, it scared Russia, it scared China. Nothing was done. And our economy was better than it's ever been. Elon Musk, again, no matter what you think about him, like, for instance, the, the robot thing, and I'll be honest with you, I think that is a massive mistake. I think we're in the end game with that by artificial intelligence. And you give this government control to those robots of Elon's, and for $30,000, they'll buy a whole army of them. And I think we are in a bad spot as Americans. However, I digress. In the situation of him doing what he wants to do, I think that represents what masculinity and strong men do. Is they say, you know what, we're going to hold still and we're going to do it. For instance, Zelensky. Zelensky and Putin were going to cease war about two years ago. But Zelensky, as weak as he is, let America and UK talk him into not doing that. We don't need weak men leading us. And, and how they're wanting Doug M off and Tim Walsh to be the, the picture of masculinity two portly, big-bellied men who have some feminine side to them is supposed to be the, the sign of masculinity? Give me a break. And this is going off subject a little bit, but I want to I want to bring up the fact of what this economy has been doing. Again, we see that Kamala is destroying a lot of things. Her and Biden have destroyed our economy. They say that inflation is getting better. It's not. Groceries are still climbing. This was a warning for McDonald's. McDonald's CEO says 2025 will be another challenging year because the Bidenomics financially crushed the working poor Americans. McDonald's chief executive officer sounded the alarm on low-income customers and how they will remain impoverished through 2025 because of the way of our economy. We start talking about 2025. My message to my team is we need to be preparing for another challenging year. And what that shows is no matter who wins, Trump or Kamala, I mean, just like I told you with Trump, I hope he wins, but for him to change it and turn it around, it's going to take a long time because they've destroyed our economy and our dollar and, and really the fact that our deficits are blowing out of proportion. It's going to take some time to build it back up. So what McDonald's was saying was, look, it's going to be a challenging year. We're going to have to lower our prices. Well, when they lower their prices on goods that cost more, that means they're degrading the value of the goods that you're actually putting in your body. You're eating more trash food. So that's why we don't eat fast food. But I think their warning is important because for most of their clients, you don't see the upper echelon going to buy McDonald's for the most part, is and, and they're even saying it. We majority serve the lower and lower middle working income classes. He said, so if we don't keep, you know, like a $5 meal or a $4 meal or some kind of dollar menu of some sort, we're gonna see challenges where we can't keep affording to stay in these places because the economy has put us in a bad spot. Look in Chicago where they had looting of trains. There was mass amounts of 
I'd probably say Kamala supporters, looting trains to get goods off. Do you think they're doing that to, to be the high and mighty and, and to make sure everything gets unloaded right? No, they're doing it because they're stealing to turn around and sell this on the black market to then turn around and try to make money. The more we see a bad economy, the more we're going to see people suffering, the more we're going to see them loot, the more we're going to see them not be able to make their money that they need to make, and so therefore they're wanting government to step in. One thing that Kamala and Biden has done is they're building more of a socialist mentality because if we stay in this economy for another four years, we will have more people on the government's dole. Actually, remember yesterday or day before when I mentioned there's more people on EBT cars than ever before. There's more homeless than ever before. And it's all under their tutelage. Well, to be honest with you, that might be just what they want because the more that people need the government, the more government can grow and expand. And that gives them more money and keeps you poor. Well, McDonald's is just a representation of that. They're saying, look, the lower class may not even be able to afford the higher menu. In 2025, it's going to be a tough year no matter who wins because of the way Bidenomics has affected America. So within 30 days, we've talked about the fact that NATO is readying troops and they are literally on the border of Russia, even when Zelensky is wanting quote unquote peace. We see that the markets are telling you and, and big food is telling you that they can't make it in these economies because the economy is that bad. People are looting more and more. Cities are having more and more problems. And the fact that we're trying to see a DOJ sue its own state to try to get more people who can legally not be here and who legally should not be able to vote to vote. They want people to vote in our election that are not legal citizens. And then Trump asking for more protection. This is the next 30 days. Be ready for it because there's going to be a lot transpiring. Yeah, it could be natural. It could be weather. It could be things like that. But I think you're going to see way more than that. I believe you're going to see sparks of war. I mean, did you hear that Israel's looking to, to go back into Iran? After Iran keeps shooting them, Iran's like, oh, we don't want to go to war. But they keep sending more missiles over to Israel. They're not going to take that line down. You're going to see a implode over there. Did you see that Saudi Arabia and Jordan secretly said that their airspaces could be open to this, meaning Israel possibly could work out a negotiation with them to go right towards Iran. Because Iran is not really the best friend with some of these other Gulf states. There's a lot that can take place in 30 days. Trump needs the best protection possible because I believe it's going to get very, very heated very, very quickly. And the more Kamala speaks, I think it's better because the more she speaks, the worse she looks. And the question is now, what is the next plan for Democrats? Because they're going to keep on pulling out all the punches. Be ready for it, guys. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Be free. Be free.